This is Morgan Brown with 10x Geoscience. I wanted to give a short presentation that kind of explains um, concepts of uh, seismic acquisition and particularly seismic migration, which is the, the key uh, seismic processing st step that revolutionized um, seismic processing starting perhaps 40 years ago. So here's an idealized seismic experiment where the uh, source and receiver are co-located and we've got an earth, an earth model, so we're a reflecting interface buried at depth. It's in three pieces, dips varying from uh, 45 degrees down to about 15 degrees. And uh, notice when we send uh, information, when we send a seismic signal down into the earth, it basically travels uh, obliquely to reflect off of that uh, 45 degree dipping layer and is reflected back to the back to the uh, uh, geophone and recorded. So when we record the the signal we don't actually know where spatially the signal came from. All we know is that at a certain location here at the surface we recorded a reflection pulse at time t. So this this signal that we record, this uh, um, time series that we record the geophone is called a seismic trace. So if we look at the, uh, essentially the entire survey recorded by doing about 20 seismic experiments across the, uh, across the profile here, you notice that we have a series of uh, signals recorded on the seismic trace, and some, some traces actually record two signals. If you kind of uh, idealize what we see there, sort of just draw in PowerPoint, interpret uh, lines corresponding to the, to the uh, uh, events in time, you notice how basically the events uh, cross at a certain point, so that's certainly not consistent with the, with the geology. If you bring the actual geology back in, you see number one, the, uh, the dips of those events in time are wrong, and the events are laterally mispositioned, and, and the events are actually uh, crossing one another when the dip changes, so it's, that's not very geologic. So in order, in order to get around, essentially geophysicists up until about 40 years ago were in, interpreting it around this problem. So this is, if you just do a, um, uh, a stack, so common midpoint stack, which was state of the art until about uh, 1970, uh, this is the kind of section you would get. So you would have mispositioned dipping layers, you'd have crossing events, and you'd have to uh, essentially hand correct these to their correct location using a, a, something called migration. So literally this is, uh, this is the process of migration and, and literally until about 1970 this was done by hand. So what we know, um, all we know from the seismic experiment, the, rec the recorded trace, is that there was energy came from somewhere in the subsurface and in fact somewhere in, in a constant velocity, Earth at least, somewhere along a semicircle. So here's a semicircle um, at, the, at a certain time t with radius t that essentially this uh, uh, this energy could have come from anywhere along this, this semicircle. In reality it came from this blue reflector over here, but we don't know that a priori. So what, what the process of, of seismic migration does digitally is essentially takes the energy on this trace and it sprays the energy along the semicircle. What I mean here is for all the seismic traces we essentially repeat this process and notice how we basically in digital fashion, we basically uh, put the energy along this semicircle and we repeat the process for all the traces. And what you notice here, I've plotted these semicircles so that they're, uh, they're semi-transparent. So when they lay on top of one another, they kind of uh, constructively interfere and, and, and create a darker semicircle. So if you were a, uh, a geophysicist interpreting the seismic section, you would probably look at this and interpret a... Uh, a reflection that occurred here. So let's repeat the same process for the uh, the green reflector. Spray the energy along semicircles, and then they seem to constructively interfere here. Make an interpretation. Same process for the red reflectors. Make an interpretation. And here's the magic of seismic migration. Notice that when we bring the actual geology back into the picture, the actual geology overlays the uh, the migrated reflector locations almost perfectly. So the, the beauty of, of migration is the only thing we have to know a priori 
is the velocity in the subsurface. And uh, that's, no, that's no small feat. That's actually the central challenge of seismic imaging. But once that's known, uh, seismic migration can automatically, in a digital fashion, um, essentially correct, correct for dip and velocity effects to put the geology back in its correct location. So I hope this was useful, and uh, hopefully you know how to get in contact with me. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.